Welcome back to Red Business in Focus with thanks to Cork's local enterprise offices, the series where we spotlight and support local businesses in Cork. Now this week we're meeting Dr. Angie Nagel, who is the founder of Blade Bridge, a Cork startup that works with wind farms and public bodies to repurpose wind blades. Now Angie established Blade Bridge with the support of her local enterprise office. And she joins us now today to tell us more about her journey to setting up this incredibly green business. And you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Um, I've actually seen this before because you presented at a conference. I remember being blown away at the time, pardon the pun. Uh, but yeah. for the uninitiated, you have yes. 30 seconds to tell us what you do. OK, so Blade Bridge repurposes wind turbine blades that are no longer required by the wind farms and turns them into furniture um, for greenways, um, outdoor furniture and pedestrian bridges. And we are always looking for other products um, to, to use the blades on. Okay, so. now this opens many questions. Yes. Yeah. First of all, um, the the blades and the turbines yes. have a life expectancy, That's clearly, right. do yep. they? So what is yes. that life expectancy? So in general, the blades, so the, in general, turbines are decommissioned between 20 and, tw and 30 years after they're, they're, um, they're commissioned, right? And it's usually because the farms are are being repowered and larger turbines are being put in their place. So it's not that they're failing. So the turbines are being taken down and the whole rest of the turbine except for the blades can be recycled, but the blades can't be commercially recycled yet. There's recycling opportunities for blades, but it's just not making anybody any money. So what are they made of? I mean, yeah, it's one of the great mysteries yes, of life. I mean, exactly. we see them all so, the time, but yeah, what's in them? Glass fiber reinforced polymer. So strands of glass fiber with epoxy poured throughout it. It's the same uh, material as a boat hull. So it's incredibly durable, incredibly tough. Um, it's a fabulous material that you would pay a lot of money to buy new, to get things made out of new, but it's impossible to recycle. It's very, very difficult to recycle, yeah. very costly. So 20 to 30 years, yes. they are spinning around generating That's electricity. Right, yeah. How long could they last on the ground? So when they're spinning around, they're being cyclically loaded. So they're being flexed and you know moving. And so there's a lot of stresses on them. But when you take them and use them in a static application, such as a bridge girder, there's not as many stresses on them and they can last for another 60 years or so. Okay, so, so that you get a good use out of them. Absolutely. So yeah. um, w what use can you put to them? You mentioned yeah. them, uh, obviously we're talking about the bridge, yes, that's the yes. mixture of the clues in the title, yeah. says you. Yeah. Um, but how do you make a bridge out of a turbine? Right, so you have to reverse engineer the blades. And part of the expense of our business right now is that the original equipment manufacturers won't release the data on how the blades are made. So we have to take cores from the blade, melt back the epoxy, look at how the glass fiber you know, layers are interspersed, and also do uh, to, to figure out how strong the material is. And then we also do structural testing on it to see you know, what loading it can take. And so um, this work was done at Munster Technological University down the road. And um, it took about six months to reverse engineer the first blade type that was used in the bridge. So once we reverse engineer one blade type, you don't have to do it again. Exactly. Yeah. So just on that particular model, so then we can we can take all of the the blades that are of that type type of model, um, and we visually inspect them, and we can still use them for. So charters. if you didn't have the opportunity to repurpose them, yeah. They're just going to landfill. They're going they? to landfill, and that seems to be yeah. terribly wasteful for something that's supposed to be environmentally friendly. Totally, it's it's actually it's a huge waste, right? There's so many properties like, like this is a highly engineered piece of material, you know, piece of equipment. Uh, it's 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 durable. There's so many uses that can be done with these, and it's a it's a huge waste to just landfill them or incinerate them. That's the other thing. So how did Dr. Angie yeah. Nagel come up with this idea? Oh right, uh, Dr. I mean, Angie Nagel didn't come up yeah, on her own. On her yeah. own, but how did you <laughs> end up? Falling in with the crew who Absolutely, did Absolutely, yeah. So about five or six years ago, the Rewind project started, and this was a, a, a tripartite agreement through multiple universities between um, the, the US, between Northern Ireland, and between the Re Republic of Ireland. And the purpose of the Rewind network was to look at repurposing a blade of wind turbine blades, of decommissioned wind turbine blades. So not recycling. We don't look at recycling the blades, which is grinding them up and, you know, using you know, for something else. Yeah, yeah, using for something else. And we don't look at reuse, which is taking the blades off and s sending them off, you know, to be turbine blades again someplace else. We're looking at repurposing of the blade material. So it's taking the blades and using them as mostly intact as we can for other purposes. So the Rewind Network started about five years ago. There were a bunch of PhD offers. I applied to do a PhD on it. I finished my PhD about a, um, 
a year ago, um, and I was looking at life cycle assessment, so the environmental impacts of repurposing the blades, to okay. make sure that it actually is better than landfilling. But hang on, you're a scientist, not an entrepreneur. Stick in your lane. <laughs> right, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> how, how did you manage to break oh, out of that So lane? very quickly, like I, I have a, um, I did mechanical engineering and biomedical engineering, master's in biomedical engineering. I never loved being an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like, I proved myself I could do it if I wanted to do it. If, but you, if, you if had I to. had to do it, yeah. but I'm thinking, no, I think there's more, there's more out there for me. So very quickly into doing my, my doctorate, I realized I'm much more interested in the business aspects, you know, circular economy business models and looking at how you, you know, what needs to be built out there, um, what, you know, just getting people excited about new products, yeah. waste reduction. Yeah, no, I mean, I have to say that you know, if it, we we've spoken to lots of businesses. Mm -hmm. If you're coming in with a packet of sausages, going here's my packet of sausages, yeah. or a bottle of gin, or some furniture business, people are going to go. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. What reaction did you get from the local enterprise office saying you'll never guess what I want to do with wind turbines, lads? Well, uh, the best part about it is we had the first bridge built before I ever appro approached them. So I can say to people, what do you think about building bridges out of wind turbines? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, right. And I said, well, we've actually done it already. So so it's it was a uh, you know, part of our research to to get the build, bridge built, and this this brings in my two co-founders. So my, I have two co-founders on the business, um, one of which is a lecturer, Paul, Dr. Paul Lee. He's a lecturer in wind energy at UCC, and then Kieran Ruan is a civil and structural lecturer at MTU. But he's designed tons of bridges around the country, and it was. Kieran about in 2020 who said, you know, I actually think we could build one of these bridges. Let's not just study it in theory. Let's actually build one of these bridges. And through his connections with the county council, we got our first bridge built. So what kind of support did you get from the Leo then when, when you finally convinced them that you did a product ready yeah, for market? Actually, so I applied for the, um, the priming grant and they were uh, excellent to work with. So the North Cork Leo was excellent to work with um, and supported us with priming grant to um, fund my salary and to uh, look at, get a consultant on to design additional products, which we, we looked at furniture, Greenway furniture is what, so we brought a consultant um, furniture designer to bring it, to build the Greenway furniture, so. Okay, yeah. so in other words, the, there are so many different opportunities uh, yes. that you've seen and that no doubt we will see Absolutely, in, yes. in the future. Yes, It's yeah. brilliant. Blade Bridge is the name of the business. Have you a website? Uh, yes, um, bladebridge.ie is our website. Yes, okay, you yes. can see how the technology works there. It's been an absolute pleasure. Dr. Angie Nagel, thanks, thanks for Thanks very much, us. thank you. And that's it for this episode of Red Business and Focus. Join us next week. We'll be getting into the Christmas spirit. Focusing on all things festive, we'll be joined by a panel of guests who, with the support of their local enterprise office, have forged their own way in the fashion, furniture and luxury good worlds. We're going to meet Fergal from Horizon Furniture, Anne from L'Atelier Style and Paula from Wizard and Grace Candles. An eclectic mix on next week's Red Business and Focus with thanks to Cork's local enterprise office.